You know, for a game that's all about tactical multiplayer, this game couldn't have released at a worse time. Sony's PlayStation Network went down on April 20th, just a week after this, one of the PS3's premier multiplayer shooters finally flanked the console. Talk about walking into an ambush. This is SOCOM 4 US Navy SEALs. Hostile neutralized. So obviously, releasing a game that emphasizes online multiplayer just a week before your console would lose the ability to provide online multiplayer, uh, kind of a buzzkill to say the least. And if there's a reason for the relative lack of hype around SOCOM 4, that's probably it. But don't let all the mixed reviews and the the PSN apocalypse dissuade you. SOCOM 4 is still a decent game, and eventually you'll be able to play it online. Well, maybe, or hopefully. Anyway, SOCOM is an acronym for United States Special Operations Command. The United States part doesn't get abbreviated because USACOM sounds like an arthritis ointment, and because the flag is red, white, and blue, not red, white, and brevity. The game is a third-person shooter that puts you in command of a five-man team of special military operatives trained to ensure their first strike is deadly. Now, there is a story in there somewhere, but only in the sense that the characters and places have names. Otherwise, SOCOM 4 isn't much of a storyteller, opting instead to use the whole a handful of American badasses can take on the world approach. But SOCOM 4 doesn't need a story to be compelling. The gameplay handles that by itself, and the whole idea is that, as the leader, you assess the situation, evaluate any environmental advantages, and attack using your brain as much as your machine gun, and that's all well and good, but I would like to point out, I do have a machine gun. And I listen to accept. So obviously my balls-to-the-wall approach isn't particularly conducive to success in SOCOM 4. And for me, it's fortunate the enemies are dumber than Lloyd Christmas. The AI of your foes isn't very steep in SOCOM 4. And pair that with the fact that your teammates are ruthlessly efficient, and you get a game that just isn't very difficult. In fact, you can kind of just hang back and let your teammates do all the work for you, which is... You know, that's really the way to go should you ever actually find yourself in a vicious cockfight. But in a video game, not so much. Kind of boring, in fact. But unless you crank the difficulty or, you know, battle some human opponents, your tactical attacks won't encounter much resistance. But the campaign is still pretty decent, even with the slow enemy AI. There's just something really rewarding about successfully flanking your enemies or sneaking up on an unsuspecting foe and permanently compromising them. Unfortunately, that campaign only lasts about six hours, so SOCOM is a pretty short game without all the online components. But fortunately, once PSN is restored, if PSN is restored, SOCOM 4 will have a pretty nice amount of competitive and cooperative multiplayer modes that'll boost the value of the game to its intended level. Um, you know, this is a pretty major franchise for Sony, and although it isn't the most impressive looking game in the world, the gameplay does have the polish you'd expect from one of Sony's major franchises. Oh look, this series, it obviously isn't for everyone. For example, based on the gameplay, it certainly isn't for me. But if you're into stealth and tactical games, uh, and you don't mind a very linear, very characterless experience, SOCOM 4 might be a game for you. Fire in the hole! Oracle, air defense.